What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another daily drop brought to you by TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. You know who he is. Joining me as he always does. It's our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And AJ, we're here for a, another specific UNC basketball topic we're going to be diving into on this one. And today, the discussion is what was a more disappointing season, the 2002 basketball season let me rephrase that 2001 2002 basketball season for North Carolina or the 2022 2023 basketball season for the Tar Heels the one that just passed this past season so AJ full discretion I was six seven years old back in 2002 I obviously know the records I've seen the highlights I know enough but I can't say I was there to witness it as much with my own two eyes I'm sure I was watching but I don't really remembered it but being being such a, a young buck then so um I'm going to reference you a whole lot more for that 2002 in, in, in terms of personal and what you saw with your own eyes instead of, you know, just someone like me who's more looking at it from a historical perspective. So, AJ, I'll ask you the question. It's just for the sake of, of really getting into this topic. In your opinion, what do you think was a more disappointing season, 02 or 2002? Before I answer, A, you make me feel very old. <laughs> Because I covered 20 of that team's 28 games in 2000. I, didn't, I actually didn't even know that. I didn't yeah. know that. Interesting. I've, well, that's, was, that makes it even I, a lot better because you can really talk about it then. And the other thing is, just so people know, sometimes people are like, why are you guys talking about these things? A lot of what our daily drops are are questions that we get from people, essentially. Yeah or what we hear being discussed, what we see being discussed out there. And we just want to take something small and just let's go ahead and address it and have some fun with it. A little bit radio style where you do like a radio segment topic or something like that. So we definitely want to hear what you guys have to say, Mm -hmm. especially those of you who saw the 2002 team play. And it's not what team was worse, obviously. That's a clear answer. This last year's team would have wiped the floor with 2002. But what's more disappointing? 2002 team, they were coming off. It was Matt Doherty's second year. They were coming off uh, the 2001 season that, for a while, looked really good. That club was humming. They won 16 in a row after Ronald Curry and Julius Pepper started playing. They were number one in the country. They go to Clemson the same day Dale Earnhardt dies, and they lose at Clemson, which was a Sunday afternoon. They lost their last five Sundays of the season. Some of them were not very uh, glorious at all. You could see, I could see covering them, even as a young journalist, I could see that team just unraveling as the season closed out. The ACC championship game, the, the, the arguing on the court, some of the – Other things that were said to each other on the court during the game against Duke, I was on the baseline and heard a lot of that stuff. The locker room that weekend in Atlanta, Joe Forte was on an island. You had little clicks around there. I think the culture was deteriorating already. It didn't deteriorate in 2002. It started in 2001. And the reason that's important because it it carried into the next year, but you didn't have in 2002, you didn't have Brennan Haywood who you didn't have peppers. You didn't have curry anymore. You were dealing with some of Bill Guthridge's struggles in recruiting. It wasn't a great roster. And then it didn't have great leadership in some of the older players. And it was a tough time. I mean, in all fairness, I know JC Cape got a lot of crap for some stuff that happened in Chapel Hill this past season when Pitt came and won again at the Dean Dome. But in fairness to Jason, and I was, I'm never forget talking to him in the locker room at UVA after they lost their 16th game, which was the most, they, they became the losingest Carolina team in history. Imagine the program at that time, which hadn't had any issues. I mean, they were only what, five years removed from Dean retiring. And in Guthridge went to two final fours. Doherty's first team was number one in the country for a while. And suddenly this is happening. It'd be a little easier for fans to take now, I think, than it was then because it was so uniquely different, such a dramatic difference from what people had experienced the previous basically 40 years. So I I felt for Jason then, and I kind of stuck up for him a little bit here a few months ago because imagine all that being thrust on your shoulders at 21, 22 years old, and you have to deal with that. And he struggled with that, which is okay because that's human nature. And everybody struggled with it. The head coach struggled with it the most. And that was ultimately the issue. I think the culture in that program was just falling apart. It was not good. There were um, a lot of players who were 
didn't enjoy basketball that year and they enjoyed it less as the year went on, not just because of the losing. I think this past year, while Hubert's still trying to implement his culture, I think that the approach to implementing culture <clears throat> is far better than it was in 2002 during that period. I think this was a more talented team. Obviously they would beat that team pretty, pretty convincingly. But if you, if you answer the question about disappointment, I think you can have a, 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 a cogent argue, you can make a cogent argument that this year was more disappointing because they're coming off a national title game appearance. They closed the season strong the year before. You could see the downturn in 01. There was no downturn in, in 22 or in, tw in 22. That was uh, that club played for the national championship and was a preseason number one team in the country. Everybody thought that. They said it. Their mission was championship or bust. That club in 02 had no mission. They lost their first game to Hampton. And I remember there was a headline, I think, of the Durham Herald Sun that said, these aren't your father's Tar Heels. Mm -hmm. You knew right away something was wrong. And then they kept losing and kept losing. I remember sitting on the baseline covering a game against Ohio, like in early February, Ohio University, the Bobcats came in there and wiped the crap out of the Tar Heels. So they were just bad and they were disappointing because it was a shock to the system. And it was amazing that Carolina basketball could actually be that bad. And I think for a lot of people, there was a fear that Carolina would never get it back again because Roy had already said no once. And people figured, well, he's never going to leave Kansas now. He's got to win a title at Kansas. He's going to stay there. He's etched in etched in stone there. That was the belief for a lot of people. Now, I think what makes this perhaps a little bit more disappointing is there is no Roy out there. There's no lifeline. Yeah, you knew that that, e that even though he you didn't, a lot of people didn't think he was going to leave Kansas. He was still out there, and there was still that possibility. Dean was still alive. Dean was still vibrant and Dean asked Roy to come back again after the following season. And Roy couldn't say no twice to Dean Smith. There is no situation like that now. So I think it'd be really interesting to see what a lot of people say about this, what their take is, especially if they saw the two teams play. You're fresh off all those final fours back then, 97, 98, 2000, number one in 2001, all of a sudden, boom, eight and 20. Mm -hmm. And it was a mess. It was a terrible mess. They had no point guard. They didn't have much of anything as opposed to this past year. I, I, I'll i say that I probably think this past year is more disappointing simply because expectations were significantly higher. Yeah. And it was more of a letdown. There were, if the 20, if the 2000, there's always twos involved. Yeah, I know. The 2002 team, if the 2002 team truly played to its potential, they probably still would have made the NCAA tournament. If this last year's team probably played to it, played to its potential, think about what was in the final four. Mm -hmm. They would have been the second best team there. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. So percent right. This this team, the disappointment is they didn't end up hanging a banner and any banner when they could have hung banners. Two thousand two was never going to hang a banner. Mm -hmm. So historically speaking, when you miss opportunities to hang banners, like nineteen seventy seven, for example. Like 1984 with Kenny Smith's broken wrist, that was a year a, a bigger, better banner could have been hung. Those to me are the bigger disappointments when you get further away from it. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I agree with you as well. I think I would put the 2000. I would put last year as more disappointing than the 02 season, and I agree with a lot of what you said. And I think another reason I put last year, you mentioned expectations. I think expectations drive disappointment, right? I think that's one of the biggest things. When you think disappointing, well, why is it disappointing? Because expectations were so high. I think I kind of look at the, the, you know, the 2001, 2002, uh, 2002 team. It kind of reminds me of the 2019, 2020 team at Carolina. And what I mean by that is the roster makeup. You you look at that roster and you're like, you know, the 14 and 19 team. I know they had Cole Anthony who was hurt for a lot of the season, but you know, a young, a freshman Armando Baycott. Besides that, it just wasn't a super talented roster. So I, I can see the comparison between those two of when you just look at the roster makeup of both of those teams, it's not necessarily a surprise that they struggled as much as they did. But I think when you look at that 2000 last year's team with the 22, 23 team, the roster makeup was there. One of the things that frustrated me last year was people just 
it went from RJ Davis and Caleb Love and Armando Baycott and you know the end of the 21 22 season these are you know they're these are great players these are all so good and then they start off and they're struggling next year and it's like oh no no they were never good in the first place and it's like no that that's not how it works the, the expectations around this team were there for a reason they reached the national title game for a reason and i think one one thing that makes last year so much more disappointing is like you said the expectations were there the talent in a lot of ways was there but also it was kind of like a slow burn in a way, AJ. We knew Pete Nance didn't work at the four. We all knew it. Yeah. But it, we talked to Armando. You, you interviewed Armando in the locker room. I, you can remind me what game it was afterwards. Of I mean, It was a state game. What adjustments were made? Hubert talked about making adjustments. What adjustments were made? Oh, we didn't make any adjustments. So it was like from the outside perspective, from a media perspective, you, you could see these things weren't working. And, you, and the expectations of the season coming into it were kind of weighing on the team. But it was also really disappointing because – not only did it feel like no changes were made, we kind of heard from the players that no changes were made in a lot of ways. So that to me was even more disappointing too, because it felt like it was broke, but no one was really trying that hard to do something else and fix it. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. And I think that yeah. makes it even more disappointing too. Yeah. I'm going to chalk this year up for Hubert as more of a learning year. Yeah. Big time learning months. experience. Yeah. Has to and be. there is nothing wrong with making mistakes, especially for I a guy see, who's inexperienced as he is as a head coach. Let's not, you know, let's not hide away from that fact. But you know? it doesn't matter who you are. There's nothing yeah. wrong with making mistakes. If you recognize it and learn from it. And he made some mistakes this past year. I am pretty confident that he has learned from a lot of those things and he's had the right people in his ear and there's been wonderful acknowledgement about some things and you could just see what they've done in the portal to to see some of that you don't even have to be an insider to, to recognize that i will give matt doherty some credit in 2002 and i know a lot of people we did the thing about the pod a daily drop about uh hubert and doherty is it fair to compare hubert to doherty and we did after two years we did that because the Tons of people were doing it, and they were yeah, reaching yeah. out to us about it. You can easy so to see the comparison. We'll yeah. go ahead and address it in one of these daily drops, which is what one of the things we're using these drops for. It's not something we want to hit on in a regular show. We use a drop for it. I will say this about Matt. I remember a seven-game stretch, seven straight games, where Carolina came out with a different approach. Mm -hmm. And he literally was coaching game to game. He's like, we got to get a win. We got to do something to prepare because he realized that they just couldn't, he couldn't just roll his guys out there and win games. If they got hot, they won every once in a while. They did keep the Clemson streak alive. The 19 or the 20 team did not. And a part of it was Adam Boone, the best Adam Boone's probably performance surgery right now. And he might be thinking about that game against Clemson when he went for like <laughs> 28 or whatever it was. So they kept that streak going and they tried a bunch of, bunch of different stuff. No doubt about it, but it uh, ultimately they, they they just weren't very tough. They had no point guard. The 19 team, not the word comparing them, but yeah, Anthony was out. When he was out for seven games, who was the point guard? Leaky Black. Yeah, and that's just, yeah, not really what you want. In but, North but actually, I thought, but I thought Leaky did a pretty solid Yeah, I thought job. the team was think, better. He, and, he did and he likes job, to, yeah. and I thought, I think that'll help him in his efforts to maybe make an NBA roster, which I think is mm -hmm. possible. Back back on, on topic here, I, I, it really depends. I like your point about expectations is probably the biggest thing. Expectations of what can be attained. If you miss out on having an average season, it's kind of forgettable. The reason it's hard to forget that one is because it stands out so much. It's not like... 8 and 20 was near an 11 and 15 before it yeah. and a 12 and 16 after it. It's 8 and 20. The, the freshmen on that team, Jawad Williams, Jackie Manuel, Melvin Scott, won national championships as mm. seniors. They won a national title. I went and talked to each one of them in the locker room in St. Louis about, man, when you were a freshman, did you ever think you'd be here? Melvin's in tears. Jawad's basically in tears. Jackie's like, I, I can't put this into words. Mm -hmm. You talk to Jackie now. It's an am amazing story that they had. Now, does last year's group tell a similar story at some point? Perhaps they can. Perhaps they will. But they have the benefit moving forward of the portal. That mm -hmm. club didn't have the portal. Maybe if Matt had the portal after 2001, he would have loaded up on some veteran guys and they would have been a lot better team. Mm -hmm. And maybe history at North Carolina is a lot, lot different. Who knows? But I'm, I'm going to 
go back to saying I think this past season was more disappointing simply because it was a missed opportunity to hang some kind of banner. I, I think in hindsight, I'm not sure it was a national championship team at its best because I don't think the composition was great, but the composition was better than what the results showed. Mm-hmm. They could have they could have had a great weekend in Greensboro and won an ACC title and hung a banner there or something like that, but they didn't hang anything. Mm-hmm. And the embarrassment of the first preseason number one team to do all the stuff that they ended up doing, I think that that lasts longer, carries more weight than just a horrible 8-20 and 20 aberration. Yeah, agreed. I I completely agree too. For me, it's a twenty twenty. I know obviously I'm a little I'm a it's a little recency bias for me, obviously, because I witnessed this, but I think it goes further than that. I think I just think when you compare the two and you 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 kind of understand and try to comprehend the context around the program at the time and both teams and what the expectations were, for me, there's only one right answer. It, it it's last season. Now, good point though. It, it could be a catalyst for a big year this year with in, in a big learning experience, and it could be looked back on in the next five years of. Well, Hebert needed that and the program needed that season yeah. to learn and grow to get to where maybe they eventually will be in five yeah. years. Or maybe we'll look back and say, you know, that was kind of the omen and, and, and the first signs of what was actually to come with, you know, this current state of the North Carolina basketball program. Could, could, you know, could have been pivotal for sure. Yeah. We want to uh, know yeah. what you guys think. We want to know what you guys yeah. think. Let us know on Facebook. Let us know on Twitter, which Facebook is Tar Heel Illustrated on Twitter, which is at Heel Illustrated, mm-hmm. or on our uh, on our message boards. Premium, we, yeah, we post these on our yeah, um, premium our subscribers can well. go in there and get involved but in the chat. Yep, conversations a thousand times better on premium though. Trust me, and yeah, that's where we drop more into. That's where you want to be. Hundred percent. It's the place to be, man. You, and again, you learn so much. So much of the content we put out is only premium. And if you want to know more about, I don't know, Elliot Cadeau situation. Maybe what's going on with transfers and football, uh, basketball, what's going on behind the scenes. You get all that by being a premium subscriber, 833 a month. Go ahead and sign up. Link is below. Appreciate y'all watching another daily drop. If you it, Let's do this. If you enjoyed the video, and let's say if you do agree with us, go ahead and like this video below. If, if you think the O2 team was more disappointing, We'll take the we'll take the hit. Don't like the video below. If you think 22 was a more disappointing team, go ahead and like this video. That'll give us a pretty good gauge. And also, like AJ mentioned, get involved on our social media platforms and TarHillIllustrated.com. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Another episode of the Daily Drop. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll see y'all on the next one. Thanks.